thankful for how much the Lord has blessed us and for all he's done, uh, not just personally, but in our families, in our church. And just we want to praise the Lord tonight. Those of you joining us on live stream, welcome. We're going to have a time of testimonies and a favorite hymn. So be thinking about a short testimony of, of praise and thankfulness to our God. Uh, and if you have a favorite hymn, okay, uh, this is this is the night to do that. Um, I'm always fearful to say that because I know there's going to be one that I just don't know. So this is your chance. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you can help us out, when you do give a testimony and a song, please give us the song title first to give the piano player and our video has a chance to pull that information up and then you can give a testimony. But let's stand and open our service tonight by singing happiness is to know the Savior. Because he lives. 
because he lives. Sorry. It's, it's been a long week, and it's only Tuesday. And it's always it's always good to give thanks to the Lord. He hideth my soul a wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord.
Do you have a testimony? Our great Savior, let's sing the first first of all.
That's awesome. Amen. Great testimony. Oh, how I love Jesus. We'll sing the first. Let's stand and sing the first and last verse of It Is Well With My Soul. 417, Mr. Kim, sorry. Thank you. 
miss anybody. So something is in the, uh, uh, Tom, I'm sorry, I saw yours first. Go ahead. 4,000 pounds, we say. But you, because you don't have, I have walk on water, did you? No, I, you I don't. You want to get that. Don't. Number 10. <laughs> Do you have a testimony, Tom? Uh, the, the, what culmination of this week uh, is, is beyond what I expected. I had my wife came to me. My wife came with me to the the anniversary. And uh, if you I, I I don't know if you could feel
Shaw will be the last one. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't hear you. Uh, did you say an early Christmas hit? Absolutely. The child is this. And then Mr. Shaw will, and then we'll be done. Uh, do you know the number by any chance? 118. 118? Thank you.
share devotional here of I will give thanks out of Psalm 18. And now at verse 49 is our text verse. It says, Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. Let's pray. God, thank you for this time together. Thank you, Lord, for this time of the year where we just uh, take a, a break and a pause in our life just to be able to express thanksgiving and gratitude to our God. And Lord, I pray that you just would bless these uh, devotional thoughts tonight in reference to uh, offering up uh, gratitude, offering up thanksgiving and praise to our God. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 18 is uh, one of my favorite psalms to be able to read, and really Psalm 18 and verse 6 uh, really speaks to my heart. It says, In my distress I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him even into his ears. And so Psalm 18 is a wonderful psalm reminding us of the uh, blessings and the presence and deliverance of God. David wrote this psalm. Uh, shortly after he was delivered from his enemies. And uh, it really is a psalm or a song of great victory. I like what Warren Worsby said. He said, it is easier to sing after the victory. It takes faith to sing during the battle. Amen. And uh, sometimes things uh, get hard and difficult in our lives, and it's hard to sing praises to the Lord. It's hard to be thankful to God uh, when it seems like everything's falling apart. And But wait a minute, God is still God, he's still on the throne, he's still in control, he still loves you, and uh, we can give him praise even in the midst of trials and difficulties. It's amazing that uh, David, in our text verse, in verse 49, he says, therefore will I give thanks. And so whenever you read therefore, you always got to back up and say, okay, what is he, how is he responding? Why is he responding that way? There's something that has taken place beforehand that gives him the will and desire and longing to praise God in the presence. And when you back up into the psalm, uh, in verses 1 through 3, David is really uh, crying out in remembrance of what God had done uh, for him. Notice in Psalm 18, and verse 1, it says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. God had given me strength when he didn't have any strength whatsoever to be able to go on. He said, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my butler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. And so no wonder when you get to the end of this psalm, he says, therefore I will praise the Lord. I will give thanks unto my God. Now, why? Because God has given him stability in his life. God's given him deliverance. God has given him strength. God has given him protection. All these things that God had done in his life uh, brought him to a conclusion in his thought process because of these things. I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give God the praise. I'm going to say thank you to the Lord. And uh, as you come to the end, we don't have time to go through the psalm and break it all down. But when you get to verse 31 through 36, David is moving forward into the presence in reference to singing praises unto his God. He speaks of what God had done in the past. But in verse 31 it says, For who is God save the Lord, and who is a rock save our God? It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. And so uh, he's looking in the past, rejoicing what God had done. But in the present, he's acknowledging that God is still with me and God is still enabling me to move ahead. And then, and of course, when he gets to the end of the psalm, you can see in your notes, uh, looking back, uh, God's blessings will generate a positive spirit to move ahead in the present. And so David was willing to move ahead in his life and come to the conclusion of acknowledging he was going to give thanks to God because of the fact of what took place in the past. And, uh, I'm, uh, you know, when you go through trials, you go through difficulties, it's not very exciting sometimes. And oftentimes we wonder why we're going through that. But I know after you're saved a while, 
and after you experience some things walking with God, uh, that you'll find that as the things that took place in the past where God showed himself mighty and strong, in the present gives you the strength and the faith to be able to go on because of what God's done in the past. And uh, I really I really don't doubt uh, whether God can take care of me or not. I've seen him take care of me in the past. I don't really, I really don't doubt whether God can provide for me or not because God has taken care of me in the past. And so uh, I, I have to be with David and say, I will give thanks unto the Lord. And I will thank him. I wrote down, I think there's seven of them here. And don't worry, it won't take long. And uh, thoughts in reference to this matter of giving thanks to the Lord. Notice, first of all, uh, in Psalm 30 and verse 4, there's sanctification. Notice it says in your notes there, Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. He acknowledges the fact in the psalm that we are saints of God. That means we are sanctified. Uh, he speaks in reference to us remembering the holiness of God. To be holy is to be sanctified. And so God sanctifies us when he saves us. He washes us clean. He separates us from the Lord and uh, from the world and separates us unto him. And so we have a very blessed relationship because of the sanctification of God. And I, I think we've kind of, in present day, Christianity kind of ignored and kind of moved away from that word of sanctification. I remember several years ago, I preached a message on sanctification. And boy, I had a couple of people really get mad at me about it. And they said, oh, you know, the separation and all this, I didn't have to ever preach on, well, wait a minute. We are separated, whether you like it or not. Amen. If you got saved, you were separated from the world. You were separated unto the Lord. If you're saved, you've been washed clean of your sins, so you're separated from your sins. And there's this spirit of uh, rejoicing that the believer has that we are sanctified in God. And so because we're sanctified in God, then I'm going to say I'm going to praise him. I'm going to Amen. thank him for yeah. the sanctification that he's brought in my yeah. life. Number two there, I see, I called it adoration. Because Psalm 30 and verse 12 says, To the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent, O Lord my God. I will give thanks unto thee forever. And what is he talking about in that psalm and uh, uh, that verse? He's talking about adoring God. Uh, he says, my glory may sing praise to thee. He wasn't glorifying himself or looking unto himself, but rather he was acknowledging all that God is, and so he adores the Lord. Having a spirit of gratitude and praise unto God uh, puts us in a position of adoring him, uh, and, uh, proceeding and living our life for the glory of God. He, he, I like what he says in the middle of the psalm, that verse, he says, uh, and not be silent. <laughs> He's just basically saying this, I'm not going to shut up about glorifying God. I'm not going to shut up in, in giving thanks unto my God. I'm going to speak forth his praises continually. Amen. Why? Because he adores him. And so there's sanctification, there's adoration. And then number three, we have cooperation, or not cooperation, corporation. And I was thinking about cooperation with the corporation when I was putting this together. And I, I thought, well, don't say cooperation, it's corporation. But I said it anyway. Psalm 35 and 18 says, I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. That's the corporation right there. I will praise thee among much people. And so God inhabits the praise of his people. When God's people come together as a mighty congregation, Amen. Uh, there is praise and worship that automatically takes place because of our love and adoration for God and because of our unwillingness to keep silent about who he is it is a natural thing for the congregation of God to sing praises of thanksgiving 
unto the Lord. And so we see the corporation, the church, as a body together. And then I thought of this in Psalm 75, 1, the presentation of saying thank you. Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks, for that thy name is near thy wondrous works declare. The presentation, the works of God. We declare, listen, the glory of God is declared by his wonderful works. Look around us and see all that God has done. Look around us and see all that he will continue to do. And it stirs us with a spirit of just wanting to say, thank you, Lord. And uh, God has done marvelous, a marvelous work in his creation and in each one of us. We are fearfully and wonderfully made because we're created in the image of God. And we are made a new creature when we trust Christ because all the old things are passed away. And behold, everything in our life is new. And so the presentation of God is his wondrous works that he has done in us for us and through us. And so I'm going to give thanks. I'm, I, I need to thank the Lord. So I see the presentation. I see the generations in this matter of saying thank you. Uh, Psalms uh, 79 and verse 13 uh, says, So we thy people and sheep of thy pasture will give thee thanks forever. We shall show forth thy praise to all generations. And how desperately, I think, the generations that follow after generation after generation needs to see and experience this matter of thanksgiving and praise under our God. We need to be grateful. We, we live in a world where people are not satisfied with anything. They're not thankful for anything. But we ought to have a spirit as a Christian uh, that uh, from generation to generation, we want our lives to testify of the goodness of God. And so it's good for our children uh, to learn how to praise the Lord. It's good for your grandchildren to learn how to praise the Lord. It's good for us as adults to greet the first generations of uh, those that are saved, to show forth the praises of God so that we'll be able to see it go from generation to generation to generation. And then I see the exaltation. In Psalm 92 and verse 1, it says, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. I think sometimes we forget that. It is a good thing for us to give thanks unto the Lord. And to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. That's exaltation. Uh, there's no one greater, no one bigger, no, no one more magnificent than our God. Uh, he is above all things. He's before all things. He controls all things. Uh, he is worthy of all praise and all glory. And so our we give thanks because of the fact that we want to exalt the name of our God. So there's exaltation. Uh, lift up the name of Jesus. Why? Because at the name of Jesus, every knee's going to bow and every tongue's going to confess. So why don't we just enjoy lifting his name up right now and praising him. And so there's an exaltation. And then there's a salvation. Salvation. Psalm 106 and 1 says, Praise ye the Lord, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good for his mercy endureth forever. I'm thankful that when he saves us, he saves us forever. I'm glad that his grace, I'm thank, glad that his mercy endures. His mercy doesn't all of a sudden run out of energy because time marches on. His mercy doesn't all of a sudden run out of its effectiveness because we've been saved quite a while. Or maybe we've been tempted and we've fallen by the wayside for a while. No, God's mercy continues on. He gives us eternal life and we never want to perish. Why? Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so this matter of salvation, the salvation of God, I want to always have a spirit to say, thank you, Lord for saving my soul. Amen. And so this matter of uh, being in line with David when he said, therefore will I thank 
give thanks to thee. Amen. And if he's willing to give thanks unto God because of these things that happen in his life, then certainly we ought to be willing to give thanks to God also. Uh, Harry Ironside, you can see in your notes there, Harry Ironside said, we would worry less if we praised more. Amen. Thanksgiving is the enemy of discontent and dissatisfaction. Uh, our world needs a good dose of that. Our world needs a good dose of Jesus Christ Amen. to where we can learn how to be thankful for who we are, thankful for what we are, thankful for what we have, thankful to know that God loves us and cares for us. And, and we may not have uh, everything that somebody else has, but God is still a good God to bless our soul and to stir us in, in, in the uh, uh, spirit of saying thank you. I was thinking the other day of uh, people that don't have uh, what I have. And it, it, God really touched my heart about that. And I thought, Lord, you've been so good to me. You've been so good to me. There's many people around this world don't have anything close to what I have. Why, why would I have any entertaining thoughts of griping and complaining. Why would I be discontent with what I have when God has given so much and God is blessed so greatly? And so I will give thanks unto the Lord. Howard, uh, I'm sorry, Henry Ward Beecher said this, pride slays thanksgiving, but a humble mind is the soil out of which thanks naturally grows. And so let's not be puffed up in pride and uh, just be dissatisfied with life and say, well, I wish I had this. I wish I had that. I wish I had more. I wish I that. Everything is living on the wish list of things that you don't have because you think you deserve them and you're puffed up in pride. Well, only just be humble before God and just say, thank you, Lord, for what you've done, what you have given, what you have blessed me with. Thank you, God, just for who you are. Then Dietrich Bonhoeffer said this, we pray for the big things and forget to give thanks for the ordinary. You ought to thank the Lord you had breath in your lungs to get up this morning. You ought to thank the Lord you had strength in your body to be able to go to work. You ought to thank the Lord that uh, what the small things in life that we have a tendency to look over are the big things really that we ought to be thankful for. He goes on and says, how can God entrust great things to one who will not thankfully receive from him the little things? And so, you know, Jesus said, to whom much is given, much is required. And so we ought to be in a spirit of just saying, I'm going to thank the Lord because of, of who he is and what he has done to my, in my life and the little things uh, are so important. I was, <laughs> I was at the uh, uh, Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> That's my lifeblood, amen. <laughs> I was at Dunkin' Donuts, and uh, uh, I forget, I don't know what the price was, but anyway, my change was like six cents or something like that. And the guy was standing there like he was going to keep my six cents. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, if I want to give you six cents, I'll give you the six cents. But just don't automatically assume I'm going to give you six cents. So I held my hand out, so he gave me my six cents back. And I looked at him and said, listen, I want you to know this. My grandfather said, take care of your pennies. Your dollar bills will take care of themselves. And uh, you say, what does that have to do with anything? The little things. I know a time when I didn't have six cents in my pocket. The little things we have a tendency to look over. Oh, it's just that's just six cents. And uh, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. The little things are just as important in our life, and God will bless them if we'll just be willing to say thank you, Lord. And you know, if He can trust you with a little, then He can trust you with a lot. And so we just need to be a spirit, have a spirit about us that we're willing. Uh, to give thanks and praise unto the Lord. 
Now, don't think ill of me because I wanted my six cents. Amen. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, boy. Well, we need to pray. If you have any prayer requests, we will need to add uh, on your prayer sheet um, my, my brother-in-law, Chuck Mays, that's Joanne's uh, brother. Uh, he has a bacterial infection. Uh, he has COVID. Uh, he has to have all of his teeth, teeth extracted. And he's in the hospital right now. He's not very coherent. And so if you pray for him, we'd appreciate that. And uh, we, that's about all we really know what's going on right now with him. I know he's been struggling health-wise in the last year or two. And so if you can pray for him, we'd appreciate that. Chuck Bays. Anything else we need to add to the prayer sheet tonight? Nothing? Good. Got everybody on there. We're in good shape then. Well, let's pray for a good service this Sunday. Let's pray for each other that God will give us a blessed Thanksgiving day. And uh, let's, let's really take time on Thanksgiving uh, just to set aside a moment to be able to pray and sincerely thank God for everything that you have that God has given you. And let's thank the Lord that God will work in other people's lives in a special way. God has bring, been bringing people out to our church and people are getting saved and God's been doing a great work. And I think, I think he's worthy of our willingness just to come before him and just say thank you. And so let's pray. Father, thank you so much for allowing us to experience a move of God. Thank you, Lord, that you saved us. Thank you, Lord, that we, oh, uh, really could, could not even uh, mention or entertain any thoughts of heaven if it wasn't for what Christ did for us. And so, Lord, we're thankful that we can uh, pray for those that are on our prayer sheet. Lord, knowing that you answer prayer, and we come to you tonight, Lord, in faith, believing that all things are possible to him that believeth. And so we are thankful for your blessings. We're thankful, Lord, that you use us to be a witness and testimony to others. And Lord, I pray uh, that this time of Thanksgiving, there would be somebody that we can share uh, the message of real hope, that Jesus Christ came to this world, died, was buried, and rose again just so people could be saved. Amen. And so God bless us. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You're welcome to take time and pray for our prayer, those on our prayer sheet tonight. God bless you and have a great Thanksgiving. Amen. God bless.